Welcome to another edition of Great British Churches. Today we are in Kenton, which is sort of in the middle of nowhere near Earlsalm, Suffolk, sort of out in the sticks between Needham Market, Woodbridge and Ipswich to the south. You find us today at All Saints Church, Kenton, and uh, this is in the sort of series we've been doing um, in the last days uh, of looking at looking at parish churches in this area. Now, I have to do... Mel has got a day off today. Well, she hasn't. She's hiding up, actually. But uh, I've got to do the talk. So uh, have a look. It's a beautiful tower here. There's some amazing flint work on it. Lovely windows and doors. Monument to those of the village who fell in the Great War. If you're wondering what all these funny flags are, it's because we're in England and we've got a Queen. And that Queen's been about for a bit. In fact, that's her, is it her Platinum Jubilee. I'm old enough to have a mug left from the Silver Jubilee. It's 1977. There you go. You can work out how old I am. You don't, you know, you don't have to count the rings in my leg. Right, look at these windows. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, the west door of the tower is uh, 14th century. It's small with two light windows above it. An ogie shapes to, of, uh, in the decorated tracery, echoed by the bell openings further up. Oh, I should be looking up there, really, shouldn't I? There we go. Some lovely stonework on here. Again, we're in the, the sort of wool area of Suffolk, where uh, the money for the area would have come from uh, the wool trade. And they used to make this stuff called broadcloth, which was sent all over the place, mostly to Europe. Got a lovely little extension on here, which is uh, Tudor brick. As you can see, that is from the sort of early 15th century. It's, it's quite gorgeous. It's very early. I mean... There's some skill gone into making those windows, isn't there? It uh, again, it sort of uh, reminds me of uh, sort of the palaces you see in London. You made at the same time. It is gorgeous. Have a look. I hope we can we can pick it up. All I can see is my bold, sweaty head in the lens at the moment with uh, with Mel's Mel's phone. But uh, we have a priest door. Have a look. Cross up the top there. Got a lovely cemetery not long ago um about a century ago the population of this village was only about 150 i think it's probably a bit more now let's have a look a lovely tree file window there Just trying to make out to see if i can see it there we go let's go around and have a look at the other side watch it out for rabbit holes because rabbits live around here and rabbits have been falling down them for the last few days isn't it? It's a little gorgeous little church. I think 12th, 13th century. Um, let's have a look. It's a funny little place because uh, the uh, the village was once served by a light railway which used to run sort of through Debenham to Stow Market. And uh, it was there till the, the 1960s. It was called the Midi, uh, the Mid Suffolk Light Railway, and uh, didn't do a lot. And uh, what was his name? Uh, Beeching. Beeching, the fella in the 1960s. He, he put an end to it and he said, no more. If the railways don't make a profit, we're going to get rid of the branch line. So it's gone. And all that's left is a little bridge down the road. Let's go in and have a look at the church. Give the camera a moment or two. How was about that? There's a gorgeous porch. Lovely stonework. And there we go. Oh, this is the brick chapel. So we're looking into it there. Complete with lawnmowers and beautiful views. There we go. Oh, hello. The door's opening by itself, ghostly. But look at that door, isn't that gorgeous? And what we got? A nice commemoration of the Doomsday Book. Go and have a look. Look at the stonework, isn't it gorgeous? That'll be a great place to put one of our great British churches cards. Let's have a look because we've we oh, mm -hmm. I'm oh I'm backing up reverse. Mm -hmm. The doomsday. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I've got that in camera. Oh, did you? Yes, and a load of the graffiti. Look at that graffiti. Look at that, they're teenagers this, back here. 
I just found some milestones in the history of this church. Yep, speak Ken away. Six, the Doomsday Survey shows that a church existed at Kenton, maybe a Saxon church of wood. Wow. In 1180 to 90, the safe doorway was built and also made with the core of the nave and chancel. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the lead work there. Do you want to talk about this lead work here? Look? Yeah, is that stuff from the roof? I'm not entirely sure. Look, there's even a cross of St John in the wall. And there's some of them outside. I've noticed that up on the tower. <gasps> With the views, look at that. In 1375 to 1400, the Western Tower was built when decorated architecture was evolving into perpendicular. And you have a look up on the roof there, look. Isn't that gorgeous? You've got those carvings. Looks like two belts. That is beautiful. In 1423, Roger Starling, Vicar of Kenton, left in his will 20 shillings towards painting of the representation of God sitting in majesty on the Day of Judgment with associated matters relating to the Last Judgment. Do you want to take over? Clearly, Kenton had a doom painting. Right. That, that's unfortunately gone by the looks of things. Uh -huh. It would have been above its chancel arch. Similar to those at Wenhaston and Stanningfield. Another well, cross of St George. Mm -hmm. St John, sorry. The south porch was added in the late 15th century. And the old bench ends and the old cornices date from this time. So there is in here, there is an old bench. I'm not sure. There's an old bench end. I did see it. Oh, it's in this little chapel over here. So, you've got that there. That is, that's pretty old. So, that's probably referring to that. Um, John Garney's in 1500 to 22 was the Lord of the Manor and had the South Chapel built, which is that little room that Paul told you about that's got the lawn mower in it. Um, and he had it dedicated to St John the Evangelist, which is probably why there's John's crosses everywhere. Yeah, they're up in the tower. Well, yeah, and we've got probably another one there, look. Um, there, and it was in his will of 1522, which is two years before his death, he asked to be buried there beneath a marble stone, or a milestone, sorry. So, if I can get you over there. There is a ledger stone in the floor that I noticed. Ooh. The lawnmower is in the way, coming this way. So, let's have a look. Yeah. In there we go. There's the ledger stone for John Garney. Um, there's also his son is there. 1759 he died. Um, it looks like there's two children there, aged four years and five years. Unfortunately, I can't get any closer to that because there's a lot more in the way. And we've got a niche here that probably would have had. Um, St. John put in there himself, but now we've got uh, St. Mary there. And there's a little piscina there, which would suggest that it would have had an altar of some sort. Oh, this is beautiful. It I is, isn't it? Do you want to tell the people that um, All Saints, what is, what is amazing about All Saints? It's the second most dedicated church. Yeah, with about fifteen or 1,600 churches named All Saints. The top one being St. Mary's. So. This is beautiful. This is amazing. This would have been Chantry Chapel. Mm -hmm. Can I speak? Yeah. I'm allowed to speak. Right, Chantry Chapel. This probably would have been fenced off in here. This would have been separate to the church. This would have been just for the family. Well, it had a separate doorway entrance there. Yeah, but you've done it, and they would have paid in Catholic times for a priest 
It's just to look after this little space. So imagine that job. There's a, uh, I don't know what that would have been up there, a window of some sort? Could also, yeah, could well be a Well, you've got the, the notes, why don't you be having a look? I shall have a look. Let's have a look. I don't know why I bring him, he doesn't do any work. I do. <laughs> right. Work, I'll tell you what, I work through that chili con carne down at the Victoria you bought me, which is very nice, thank you very much. You did, didn't you? And, um, so, anyway, as I was saying, John Darnie's in his will of 1522, which is two years before his death, he asked for it to be buried there beneath the milestone, which I just showed you, and left money to find an honest priest, say, masses daily, in the chapel which I have lately edified and done to be made on the south side of Kenton Church. And this is where we stand today. Early 1600, the present pulpit was installed. Right, I'm going to take you over to the pulpit. And that's a bit of a corporate itself. So I'm just going to... I'm walking in between two pews, and so it's a little bit tricky. Right. And this is the pulpit that was installed in the 1600, or early 1600. Um, and it's also the Laudian altar rails. Now, they're quite pretty. So there we've got the Laudian altar rails there. Um, and they've got twisted balusters, um, which I can't actually see, so I think they've probably been removed. But we've got this, and we think this is, what do we say, 15th century pew or something? This, uh, yes, this one, it's uh, Elizabeth the first period. As you can see, it's still got the holes in the end there where you would have put a lit taper. Because back in the day, they wouldn't have had candles because candles were expensive. You'd have had a rush dipped in wax and lit. Mm -hmm. And if you sat there, it would burn your ear if you didn't think it We do have some stained glass here, but we think that it's quite modern. If Paul has a look at my notes, he might see the dates for those. But we've got, we've got one here for St. Maria or St. Mary. Um, just walk around the big fella. And we've got St. Paul here. You can see he's yeah, got a sword. Or... Largely 19th century. We've got a lovely Jacobean box there. Have you noticed that behind the... Oh, there yes, yeah, it is. There you yeah. go. Mm. Mm, I wonder what that was for. Got to pay attention when I'm talking to you. He's so going to get it when he gets home. Yeah, it's like, look at that and we've got oh, a lovely yeah. window there. And that's absolutely beautiful. Right, so we've got a set. Well, if he moves out of the way, I'll well, show you the. the 20th century, it was a court, I can't remember, one man. He didn't like it. He said, that doesn't go with the rest of the church. Yes, he, he does sort of say it's a bit of an abomination. So we've got a window there for St. Peter. You can see that as him because he's got the key to the gate of heaven in his hands. And then we've got this priest door. Now, this church has being restored and I think it was restored in the Victorian era is that right Paul? It did and they redid the doors the old priest doors which is that one that there. there so that's been done 19th century yeah. have a look at the wonderful ceiling up there with early 20th century lighting and you can see the hammer beam is original to the church yeah and I think that's 13th or 14th century but they left it in when they redid the roof okay. in Victorian times you can see that hammer beam there. Hang on a moment. Amazing historical alert. Come this way. But uh right, up here. Do you want me to take the camera just for a minute? So I'll just let me borrow and I'll be back. Don't you worry. Oh, just so you know, there's ladies been in here, there's a wedding tomorrow. So uh Saturday, that's it. So here we go up the little stairs, going up there to where a rood loft would have been. And if we have a look, because I've got this thing about rood screens, because they're such a big part of churches and just about always gone now. But if you can see, there's a niche in there, and that's where the big beam would have gone across to the other side, and there would have been a screen. In fact, there's still a niche in there, which we said, who did we say that was? Oh, look at that, they've got two, two 
shields on there. Oh dear, I've not, I've dropped my notes, I can't. Hang on, this is, I'm gonna hand you back to the lady wife. This, this is why I need your help. <laughs> now he knows what it's like to do everything. Yeah, I do. <laughs> He bought lunch, thank you very much. That was yeah, that's what it's like. Victoria, Earlstone, other, other amazing gastro pubs with nice little breweries attached to them are available. If they are, I'm not going, I'll come back here. And she stole beer mats. Thanks. And you can see there's these absolutely wonderful. Uh, roof there. To me, it looks like a hull of a boat. It's just simple but it's beautiful and I don't know if you're going to see but where those um, beams come down in the middle there there are some roundels there and you've got like flowers there seems to be an animal in that one in the middle I can't see it and then go on then Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It is a beautiful church and it's so wide. It is. I don't know if you said anything in outside, but this is a village of about 150 people. Yeah. I've said that. And they have kept this church alive. They've been responsible for it. Yeah. And there's even a wedding here. Mm -hmm. Which is, I just think it's amazing that. So, Paul, tell us about the font. Oh, the font, the font, right. I can't get too close to it because the ladies have left foliage for the, for the flowers wedding. that are going to happen on. The octagonal bowl of the font is 13th century Purbeck marble with sharp, sharply canted sides and traditional pattern of blind arches. The sharp, um, shaft no, and steps are by Hakewill. Yeah, he was the Victorian um, renovator. Oh, it's him, is it? I yeah. think I yeah. think it was him that was responsible for. But the bowl <laughs> is thirteenth century. I mean, the steps mm. aren't. You can see they're just not worn enough. No. And you haven't had. Um, your, what was your father from the Reformation say? Um, I don't know. I don't think he. There's any record of it in his book of him coming here. I have a look upstairs, look at that, look at the lovely look at the woodwork on the bell tower. I think you did show people that when we first when you first come in. Oh, I missed it. And then you've got you've got that door there. I'll tell you what, you have to be brave to climb that ladder. That is extremely that is extremely tall. And that opening, I hope no one has us go up there. I can't imagine anyone being small enough to get up there. I wouldn't fall one of those, that's my game. No, I wouldn't. Anyway. Okay. I think it's time that we call an end to this. <laughs> really? This is a nice church though, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful church. Good history. Yeah. And that's the amazing thing about these man, is it? it's love. I mean, somebody, mm -hmm. somebody's going to get married here, and I think that is absolutely yeah. great because even now the, the population isn't big, is it? Yeah, it she is. Seems to marry a child over there, you did, didn't you? I did, yes, yeah. It is. Anyway, I think that's concluding our video for today. We have done four churches today. Unfortunately, one was shut. Um, I will try and put that on there, but you're only going to see the outside of it. But... Um, but yeah, I do like this one. We had we did come here a few years ago. I'm sure we did. But you've got here, look, you've got some more lead. Margaret Lord, John Claude, William Lord, Church Warding, 1714. Wow. You know, is this... 1714, I don't have one behind you as well. And these, this is lead from the roof, isn't it? I don't know if it is. Um, it, does it not say on the notes? Uh, no, it doesn't. These weren't here. The trouble is, you're looking at a book that's been 120 years old. <laughs> 1947. 1947. <laughs> I'm correct. It's 70 odd years old. Okay. Do you, well, want, do you want to do the. Hang on. 
Point it at me, or do the like, subscribe, and if you like these videos, join us on some more. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget, bong, to pull that bell. Ring that bell. Stop me if you like. Right, okay. I'm just going to point you over here. We have got some roles of oh, service. Good. Yeah, we've got a... For King and Country, the role of honour at Kenton, being a list of those serving in His Majesty's forces during the Great War from this parish. So you've got Fred's Second Suffolk's Arbon, George, Royal England, Russell Arbon, yeah. Suffolk, Let Fourth Suffolk, William Cuthbert, uh, that one there, I don't know what that one is, uh, Jack Copping, RGA, Arthur Chapel, RGA, Norman Gooderham, one of my relatives, is indeed. <laughs> well, Stanley right. Hawes, probably another one of my relatives, yeah, Alfred Jolly, Cyril Jolly, Wesley Knights, Who's Harry Knights, Herbert Jolly, Ernest Lyon, Fred Mays, Robert Mays, Ernest Mays, William Mays, Albert Marsh, Vincent Moyes, Sidney Page, Fred Plant, Thomas Salter, Spencer Salter, Arthur Salter. Yeah, I'll tell you the regiments. Right, here we go. Obviously, Bedford Regiment, Middlesex Regiment, Essex Regiment. Royal Signals. Signals. Uh, Royal Artillery. Royal Engineers. Royal Engineers. Gun. Look, M Gun Corps, Machine Gun Corps. That had only just been founded in 1916 or 17. Mm. Royal Artillery. Now, the reason I wrote those names out is because I firmly believe that a person dies twice in their whole life. And it's the day they actually die. And it's the day that the last person says their name. And these people, they gave up their life to fight for this country. Got Second World War over there. I was getting to that. So, as you interrupted me, we've got the role of service for 1939. So we've got Frederick Bloomfield, Royal Navy. Nelson Jolly, Royal Artillery. Howard, Harold Jolly, North Hans Regiment. Edward Kerridge, Royal Army Medical Corps. Royal Lions. Cl Clifford Knights, Royal Engineers. Harold Knights, Richard Pe Peel, Peel, Frederick Smy, Jack Snell, George K. Stannard, and William Stevens. So it is important to remember the sacrifice that not only they done, but their families too. Their families lost brothers, sons, fathers, uncles, you know, and... They need to still be remembered. Anyway, that does really conclude the um, end of our video today. If, like you said, if Paul said, if you like it, please like and subscribe, press the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.